Flow with me. Let me start so off. Count it down and then we'll yeah. silent and then we'll jump into it. Yeah, I'll, I'll start it off and um, and then you you flow with me. You got this. We got this. Bobby K. Yes, sir. Let's go. All right, three, two, one. Man, episode one. Kick Street, man. We Kick Street podcast, it, long time. How many months have we been talking about this now? I think we started this like January, bro. Yeah? But yeah, even before man. that, we met up and said, hey, you know, we were talking about, what we, you know, the idea that you had originally evolved. Yeah, yeah, because the idea was... It was something else. Let's just say yeah, it was yeah, something yeah, else. It was something, something else, later, later, later. but now it's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? And I think yeah. this yeah. is what's going to bring us... Closer to what Kickstreet is all about, 100%. what we love, where we grew up, yeah, how yeah. we brought everything to the table to really bring something to the audience. Obviously, we're doing this because we want to share our insight, our yeah. experiences. And, and it's like, you know, we met off of the love of kicks, right? Of course. And it's I'm one of our shows. One of my shows, actually, when I participated. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and we'll, we'll break down who you are, right? And, and, and you're an elaborate showcase <laughs> of... The finest threads on earth, but right, there you go. but but um, <clears throat> yeah, man, it's like we both connected off of a love of sneakers, right? And I look on the internet and I see that people love kicks, but I've been loving kicks since 1988, right? Yeah. And so I, I I love shoes, I love sneakers, I love down to the thread, down to the shape, down to how OG look to compare to a retro. I mean, I've been into this. So this is our destiny, Kickstarter, man. For sure, man. You know I'm, I'm mean? glad to do this with you, honestly, man. I Me think, too, man. You know, when For we real. first met up at one of the shows that I was doing, Word. Bobby Kicks, by the way, vintage, curator, collector, MJ enthusiast, all that good stuff. So, go. you know, goatee right here. Yep. And, and, and goatee, goatee, as you know me, um, and just goatee because my family called me T. Yeah. And one of my first ever business adventures was called Goatee Productions. So I said, you know what? Goatee, goatee, go for your goals. Uh, I'm a Brooklynite. Go. I'm a Brooklynite. I will East Coast. Bed Star right. represent, nice. Bushwick represent. So East Coast for real. Were you West Coast? You, you're, you're Arizonian. I am. You're Arizonian. Born and raised, man. Mexican background. Word. Born and raised in Phoenix, here Arizona, the Wild West. Yep. Uh, obviously, we're in the summertime, so you're definitely feeling the heat right now. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I moved here in 2013. All right. And at first, I was like, I moved here in July. And I was like, Welcome damn. To AZ, I was man. like, damn. What the hell am I yeah. doing? But I knew I wanted to experience something different for my family. Yeah. Um, it's a nice little sneaker vibe here in Arizona too, man. At you the know? time when you moved in, I yeah. think it was like, okay, getting up there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, Okay. Because yeah, yeah. in New York, New York is a, a walking sneakerhead capital because, oh, I, I mean, to. I didn't get my license until I was 26. So wow. all we do is walk. So, so I imagine. So yeah. Right, so right. New York, we look from down up. Mm. What's on your feet first? Then we go to the attire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything got to match. That's awesome. Man. You know what I'm saying? No, but, honestly, man, I always appreciated like what the East Coast brings to the table in work. terms of like fashion. Uh, the kicks, the yeah. music. It's badass, dude. And then when I met you, I was like, oh, wow, man, you're bringing that, you're enlightening me, you know what I'm saying, with all that stuff. So Listen, awesome. well, when I met you, you know, and I've been here, when I met you, I must have lived here for like maybe six to eight months. And I'm checking the sneaker scene out, I'm going to different sneaker exhibits, and I'm like, okay, this is cool, it's not home, but I didn't move here to live in New York, so I'm in yeah. Arizona, so let me just get Feel into the happened. Arizonian culture, yeah. you know. And then I met you, and I saw... Your setup, yeah, and you had MJ pieces, Jordan pieces from like 87, 89, 92. And I'm like, and those are authentic, real pieces, not a retro, yeah. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? How, how did you get into that? How did you Dude, get into this world, man? I think that that's somewhat recent for me. I think yeah. I actually started collecting all the pieces that I wanted as a, as a kid, okay, maybe like I want to say like eight years ago. Bobby Kicks okay. was an idea. To show off some of my collections of, of Jordans that I wanted as a kid. Just okay. a simple IG, you know, simply just show off what I had. Work. I, I started getting momentum, like attention. Wow, you have this piece, you have this piece. And then people are saying, how much is that? How much is that? And then I became more of a, a, of a store. More, I started collecting more specifically for people looking for specific pieces. Yeah. I've always been an MJ fan since 1990, like two. Yeah. You know, I remember seeing him like, holy hell, like who's this guy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Me being always a short kid, you know, on the court, I was like, you know what? I gotta learn this game. I gotta find my <laughs> strengths. I gotta, real. I gotta go. You know, I gotta find what I'm good at. I was yeah. never really into sports as a kid, but when I saw Jordan play, I was like, dude, that just elevated my whole 
uh, sight on like sports and basketball and, yeah, and yeah. like what's on feet and everything like that, you know. And '93 was like the time where I fell in love with the shoes. That's the third chip. You know what I'm saying? That's the beginning of the 1993. Third chip. I was, I was. Uh, I was in four, going into fourth grade mm-hmm. and going into my first love. You know what I'm saying? I'm going into my first love. My first love was a Jordan 9, 1993. Mm-hmm. And that was the shoe that really got me into that game. The original Space Jam. The original Space Jam. I consider these the original Space Jam. So if you right. watch that movie again, mm-hmm. that's the shoe that he's wearing in the movie before he goes into the Jordan 11. That, that gym scene, right? Yeah. The gym scene with the Looney Tunes. Yeah. I, f- I feel that's my, you know, that's my <laughs> uh, true. Space Jam is a Jordan 9s, but For sure. that shoe really got me in the game back in 93. Years later, as an adult, I have disposable income. I'm doing adult things. Sure. I'm like, you know what? I want to collect all the things that I missed out as a kid. Yeah. You know? And I, after that, I had like two more Jordans, you know, later in junior high. I had the, the Jordan 11s, the Concords, and the Jordan 12 Cherries. Mm-hmm. So, but the, the Jordan 9 was, was it for me, man. That's the you, one I fell in love with. You know, the Jordan 9s, first of all, that's a rare shoe to be your first love. Cause I don't feel it's uncommon, man. Nines don't. A he never wore it on court. True. Not he wore it on a, on, on a uh, grass. You know, playing baseball. He did wear a variation you know of saying? that shoe as a cleat. You're right. Yes. Right. Yes. But so for you to have that be your first love, and you never wore it on court in '93, I would thought you would say the eights, but that sticks out. The yeah. the nines for you. That's dope. Well, that's on cool. top of that, uh, the nines became my favorite shoe because it was attainable. We didn't come up with money, okay? Yeah. I found these shoes on the yeah. clearance rack at a JC Penny. That's crazy. In the back. That's crazy. How much? You Dude, I, I don't remember how much, but they were yeah. enough to be like, my parents, without a doubt, said, yeah, we can do this. We copping them. So, so <laughs> you know, they were in the back, clearance rack, no boxes. They were like on, on metal racks, all sizes. I saw them. I, I recognized because that logo. That logo was imprinted in my head because I, I saw that symbol. I was like, I know that's Jordan. I picked them up, ran to my parents. Can I get these? Yeah. I could smell that, man. I could still smell that freaking yeah. smell, man. That classic, you know, department store, Jordan, Nike, you know, yeah. back then, you know. So that was my shoe, man. That really got me into it. I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the sport of, you know, basketball. I, I really went heavy on basketball. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're talking about when we're talking about history. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think those details that people really have to share in terms of, like, the kicks. Yes, we have the hype. We have the fashion all that stuff. But honestly, like, there's history behind every sneaker. Course. Personal stories, what we see on court, what we see on the athletes and signature lines, all these different stories, every different angle from the East Coast to the West Coast, you yeah. know, and all that stuff. So, yeah, and, and, and you know what? And that's important when we came up with this name Kickstory. Yeah. Right. Because we met off of the history of sneakers, but we also have stories behind it. So Kickstory, man, it makes sense to have your Kickstory, the history and the kick story. You know what I'm saying? Um, my Kickstory um, is the Jordan 3s, man. Jordan 3s. And I'm lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free throw line. <laughs> but I'm lucky because my first memory of Jordan really was 1988. So like, what's that? Year 3? You know, he. I know he broke his foot after year 1. So officially like his third year in the NBA. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm the youngest. I have older brothers, right? And so in New York City, in Brooklyn, it was cool because I'm young. I'm looking at everything my brothers do. And I see them wearing Jordans. I'm, I remember seeing the 2s, but... I thought they were bowling shoes at the time. Yeah, they, right? they had a weird shape to them compared to the... Yeah, 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 I remember yeah. going to the corner store. I'm like, what the hell are those? Because <laughs> there was no shoes. One thing that Nike did an amazing job with Jordan is they made sure there was no sneaker that looked nothing like Jordan. True. So it was like, you could look at it from afar. You're like, oh, that's a Jordan. Now, that's something. If you don't know what There's Jordans are. There's something to it. Because like, it's like, you know... That's how I saw these. I did, I, right. From the shape from afar. And then when I got close to him, that symbol, boom, yeah. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so right. that's how I felt about the threes, yeah. right? Yeah. And the threes was my first connection to basketball. I'm like eight years old. Yeah. I'm like seven, eight years old in 88. So that's my first connection to basketball. And I remember All-Star Weekend. I remember he wore the black ones yeah. right during yeah. the All-Star game. And I was like, black? I, I didn't know what that was. Because, you know, we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have YouTube. So we didn't even have. That wasn't even a focus. No. It was no. just the game. You know, yeah, yeah. It was just a game. And then so, you know, one, one popular area and, and people from New York and especially Brooklyn would know this is, is Fulton Street. We call it downtown Brooklyn. Okay. Um, in Harlem, they have 125th Street. So there's different little shopping areas in each borough of New York City that if you're from that area, that's where you frequent. Okay. For me, it was downtown Brooklyn. And I remember seeing the Jordan 3s. And I remember my brothers having them. And so we all had the Jordan 3s, right? And um, I just fell in love with it. 
Now I was a little kid, so I didn't have an air bubble. I remember not having an air bubble. Yeah, too. the certain sizes they they they, they, re- they yeah. replaced them with certain things. Right? I remember that. I yeah. remember that back in '88. But um, yeah, man, this is a classic shoe, man. It's timeless. What's cool about that shoe is that that sh- that model saved the Jordan line. Yeah, because I heard Jordan was displeased after the after the shoe, right? Yeah, yeah after, I heard about he's that. Like, you know, and then. Tinker came in. He took over. Yeah, that was his first shoe. Yeah, that was his first shoe. And Tinker's like, you know what? Let me, let me, let me step up. Yeah. And, he, and the cool thing about what Tinker did with Jordan, I'm sure you know this too. Like he, he was like listening to him. Mm-hmm. What do you want out of the shoe? Mm-hmm. Out, yep. He took that feedback compared to the other designers he worked with. He yep. was like Jordan. Uh, Tinker listened to Jordan. Yep. So, so he wanted more of a mid cut, you know. Um, and then on top of that, Tinker added his spin to it. Got that elephant print. He started Which finding like all these exotic, crazy. okay, exactly, man. What do you see that print anywhere? <laughs> you don't. I think he got inspired. Did he get inspired? I read, and I could be wrong, about an African safari? I believe so. Right? Something there, of that there's nature? Some, there's some tie-in there's with, some with, with heritage and all that stuff, from yeah, what I understand. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think that's an awesome spin, man. It's storytelling at its best. It's a, it's a one of one. And and that's what make what we're doing this podcast special, Right. We can go we're down. Expanding on that, we're we're expanding on it. We're going down memory lane. We're 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 talking about the historical context of that shoe during that time. Yeah. Right. Which you know, it's kind of hard to do if you didn't live it. Actually, it's impossible to do if you didn't of live course, it. Of course, man. Right. Um. You would have to do more research. So we're like living re- historians. <laughs> yeah. Kick historians. Exactly right. Not exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly so. Right. With this podcast, man, I'm excited that you know you and I are, are, are joining forces. For sure, um, we we have this 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 connected passion to the culture. Um, this is for the culture. This is for the sneak culture, um, and I, I just love that we're going to expand on this and, and tell our personal stories, um, and then to tell a history, the history behind it. You know what I mean? It gives us a good opportunity to share, like you said, our knowledge, our ex- our, our personal experiences, yeah. especially for the young generation, man. Like a lot of the young generations now. They didn't. They never saw Jordan play. All they saw is our YouTube clips. I know that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So like crazy. we're reaching that generation now. Yeah. It's like all they know is maybe Kobe yeah. at the latest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, and LeBron is the guy right now for a lot of you know this generation. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So, so dudes like us and people like us in that in, in that in that generation. Yes, we're considered OG heads and all this and that. But I feel like we have something special to bring to the table because we have that insight, those personal stories yeah. that I feel give more context to today's shoes, yeah. to ta- today's retros, today's hype. A lot of the hype, quote unquote hype. What I mean by hype is you know some of the collabs that we see today with Nike, mm-hmm. Travis Scotts, Yeezys, and so on. A lot of that came from somewhere. They didn't just they didn't just pop out of nowhere, you know what I'm saying? And obviously tra- like Jordan loves Travis Scott. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I'm sure he loves him because of the business he's bringing him, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, of course. But, but I, and, uh, you know to me it's interesting cuz I don't see the sports connection, uh, the athletic connection. Well, Back then, I mean real quick. Yeah, yeah. Nike and all that was more towards athletes. Now it's more towards lifestyle and like, you know, mm-hmm. which is cool. They're expanding. I get it. It's a business thing, right? So what you're saying? No, it, it, you hit it right on the head, right? Um Nike are masters at marketing. Yeah. They realize that as much as they have to continue to keep the signature line, and there's other brands. I mean, shout out to Adidas, shout out to Reebok. Yeah. Right? There's other signature lines. And then there's Anta, there's Leading. I mean, there's yeah, there's, there's, an, ones, yeah. there's an explosion of signature shoes from new new uh new brands nationwide, right? Yeah. Um, but Nike and Masters at uh, marketing, and they realize this generation is connected to social media. The connection to social media, our generation, we were connected to the TV. So everything that we saw was TV related through commercials. Through commercials. So they mastered commercial gear towards. That was the outlet. That was the outlet. Yeah, yeah. But Nike always connected some form of entertainment to commercials, a la Spike Lee, a la Penny, Little Penny. With the penny, so they always had some type of connection, but it wasn't their bread and butter. It was always a signature athlete. Now we in the era that we have to adapt to, of acknowledging the entertainment value that it brings to the sneaker culture. What's funny? Which is hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's you different. I mean? yeah. It's a different. It's a different era now. I yeah. get it, and, yeah. it, and it's kind of like. Um, interesting that the OG colors that I enjoy yeah. growing up 
are lost with the collabs and the different color yeah. combinations and the different. That's a hard pill to swallow. It's I know. like, oh man, where are my OGs? Mm. You know, sometimes yeah. they, they'll just get lost in, 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 in the collection of all these different things, which is cool, whatever. Yeah. Because a lot of times that means they're cheaper because no one's going for the OGs. So I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll okay I'm okay I'll with that. I'm okay with that too. You know what yes, sir. So, yes, sir. So that's cool. But yeah, man, I mean, I, I think this is a good preview mm-hmm. of what we're going to bring to the table when it comes to Kick Street. These personal, you know, uh, uh, experiences. The knowledge that we have to offer to the table, and and a, a lot of things we might get wrong here and there, but I, I and but I think that's what makes this podcast a lot special because we want to engage the audience. Hundred percent. We want to just we want to share our knowledge. We want to share the culture. Um, are we one hundred percent experts, kickstorians, historians? No, we got some. We 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 all got learning to do. We always got learning to of do. Course. But but we have the knowledge base. To connect to our passion, I, I feel we have a strong foundation. You know what I mean? To know, to talk about our era, correct? To, to talk about correct. our experiences, the commercials correct. we saw, the mm-hmm. threads that we saw in the stores, the, the stores that are no longer here, they're disappearing. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we got uh, Wolf Footlocker's gone just for feet. You name some from the West East Coast. Where um, a couple we have like Dr. J's, Jimmy Jazz. I mean, a lot of a lot of Jimmy Jazz. I remember that. Yeah, 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 a lot of a lot of stores are lost in translation, but. You know, what I love is that not only can we go down memory lane, but we can have a present conversation because they also have retros, too. Right. And, and we know us being OG enthusiasts, you know, we can get a little upset or how the remake is, is coming out. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. From the threads to the material to the shape. Yeah. You know, um, but that's what we're going to touch on as well, too, because I mean, I love retros. I love retros because it takes me back to that time of being a little kid. So. I mean, it's, it's so many things we can talk about with Kickstory Man and, and this this initial podcast. We got it off our chest. You know no, what I mean? No, for sure. Episode one, man. Like, yeah, I'm excited man. I'm excited, this. man. For and there's real. plenty more. You know, this is just the first of many. For sure. And we're going to touch on every angle we for can sure, man. when it comes to the sneaker uh, history. Yep. Uh, everything all about it. You know what I'm saying? From the athletes yep. to the fashion to the music. Maybe that's inspired by it. Uh, everything, man. Like from the, you know how you grew up on your side of the world, how I grew up on my side of the mm-hmm. world. So there's there's so much more, and I feel like this is going to be hopefully the spark to you know for other conversations for sure at your at, at people's homes for sure to be like, man, I remember that because yeah. honestly, when I do these shows, when I have these shows, when I'm host, you know, when I'm part of these shows, when I'm selling my gear, um, a lot of people get excited. Oh, I haven't seen this in forever. Or they bring their kids. Like this is the one that I used to have. Look, That's kids. That's the excitement. That's the excitement. And I'm like, dude, like those little uh, those little interactions I have. I'm like, this is a huge plus. When I hear like old old school heads, like, man, I used to have this one. Or yeah. this is the one I used to have. Kids, look, yeah. look, look. You know. And it just sparks, you know, in, like a spark in their head. You know, of that that little joy. You know what I'm saying? Call me nostalgic. Call me kind of like you know stuck in the past. But I think those things that bring. It brings something special to the table. Not just yeah. all hype, 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 popularity contest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That whole selfie influencer world, whatever. That's what it is. But I want to bring some value to it, you know, on my side. You know, and I think that's something we agree on. It seems like you yeah, know, yeah, we, we're, we we're, first met, yeah, we're we're going to bring value to the culture. Yeah, we're going to bring value to the importance of certain sneakers and what it meant to the collaborations. Yeah. The reason why there's collaborations, and we're gonna just have fun, man. No, honestly, we, that's you what know, we're just gonna have fun. Talk. It's yeah, we're just gonna man. have fun, man. This is episode one, man, and um, like I said, I'm excited to do this with you, I'm man. I'm excited too, man. I'm, I'm, this I'm, is, I'm, I'm this excited. Is badass, dude. I'm excited for the uh, uh, continuation. Yeah, this is good. Um, and we, like I said, we're just gonna have fun and this talk kicks. I mean, you can't get can't get better than this talking kicks. Talking history, it's so just, yeah, two guys are passionate about what yes, they sir. do, and 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 having a lot of fun doing it. Yes, sir. And Episode this one sparks man. more inspiration, more you know, uh, 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 more engagement with other yeah, people man. just like us, commenting, sharing, all that good stuff. Cool. We look forward to it. There's nothing more to say on my end, man. What do you think? I'm good, man. Kicks to me, man. Listen, I'm I'm looking forward to the following yeah. that we're gonna have. I'm looking forward to the engagement. Looking forward to bringing some guests on too. Oh yeah, right. That's gonna happen. To talk about yeah. their kick story. Yeah, for sure. For you know sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. But episode one, man, in the books. Thank you for watching this episode of Kickstory, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes. And stay connected with us on Instagram and these podcast platforms listed here. We also want to hear from you, so make sure to comment below and give us your thoughts. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you next time.